look, if I'm getting in the car with somebody and I want to explain what Freak Nick was like, what three songs do I need to play? You need to play Scar, My Boo, and What's Up, What's Up. Not Welcome to Atlanta? Nah, nah. They gotta play. They gotta play all the. They well, gotta play the records. Up, what's up? You gotta yeah, play the right. records that make you that that, that actually the all moment. the yeah that put you in the moment. Yeah. I was thinking that too. I was like, wait, no, welcome to Atlanta. But I mean, when you think about just all the folks that y'all got to go to Atlanta, how much music was birthed there, and how much do you think was reflected in what we're listening to today? Um, well, everything was everything that you listen to today was affected by. I mean, Freak Nick affected all of that because what Freak Nick taught us was that we should take advantage of our cultural moments that are happening in the South. Um, and I think all Southern music, all Southern hip hop to me, now that I'm talking about it today, I'm starting to see that this is a pattern of all of our music, not just in Atlanta. Um, I would think, I would think like, even like Miami, when I asked Luke about that sound, um, he told me that the reason they made up tempo music and the things that they was incorporating was because of the culture of Miami. And there's so many different um, ethnic backgrounds in the city as opposed to just being black. You know, it's Latin people out there. It's all many different things. I'm talking about him like he's not right here, but this is what he told me. And this is what I learned. You know what I mean? I learned from just having this conversation. So I feel like, I feel like Ultimately, this is just a story of the music from the South that you've, that you've heard. You don't really realize how incorporated it was with these moments and things that happened. There's just so many other small freak nicks that have happened around the South. Um, like, you know, people go to Daytona Beach for different things. People don't went to Hampton Roads for different things. and. Um, but it's all got something to do with black uh, college spring break, right? And, 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 and every one of these moments, I'm sure it's music. I can't name all of the music in all of the places because I wasn't there. But I guarantee you if I was to go there and take, you know, just take a snapshot of it, it's definitely three songs in each one of these events that was playing that became the soundtrack of that moment. And it's all Southern music. Like back then up at one point that had to be one of them songs that you know mm -hmm. and even when you go to new orleans if you hear that song when you get to new orleans you automatically know oh i'm in the no you know what i'm saying it just automatically makes you believe or even the hot boys period anything from cash money in that area i mean in that era if you if you there in new orleans and you hear them records you actually feel like man i'm actually in new orleans right it make you feel like that so i, I just think that um Something about Southern hip hop is that we have followed, we always follow our moments and our cultural things that was happening. Uncle Luke, before we go, can I ask you, when you listen to what we have going on on the radio today, and obviously you can see your influence all over it, are you proud or do you feel like you need to get back in there and do a little tweaking? Uh, let me, I, I go, I do music all the time. I just don't put it out, but I am definitely proud because when I hear Sexy Red say, hands on your knees, then we already know that that's just that's <laughs> describing what you see in this freak nick documentary we could have actually had that's probably one of the songs that probably could have up today that probably could have ended up in this in this doc and would have stood the test of time in that because it's describing what what you see uh like too short said you know uh drake didn't invent uh twerking is booty shaking so that's hands on your knees and back in up and dropping it like it's hot and that's what you saw on the on the hoods of the cars with some of the some of y'all mamas out there at that time so uh when you when you look at it and you think about um the the, the culture of where we were then and where we're at right now and when it's with the music and how the music was so important and how it's driving force of right now i look at what these girls are doing nowadays uh, on their songs, and you see the same party, the same energy of what you saw in in the music right now. If you had a, if you really had a freak nick right now, it won't be driven by uh, us. It'll be driven by the women, you know, because of the the, the same thing that you had 
with me at the height of my career, you know, with two live crew. And then now you add thi this element of of, uh, of artists, the Ice Spices and all the mother world, you know, <laughs> going to a nice little innocent party. They'll probably turn it out in the same way with their fans, you know, who are coming there expecting those same sounds. And so, you know, uh, that's why this, this, this documentary is so important because it gets to tell the story that people don't know about the South. I mean, we don't have our stories told, you know, like JD been saying all day. I mean, you know, you don't know about our Crenshaw, you know, you, you don't, you know, you don't know that exists on Bankhead. You don't know that exists on 15th Avenue in Miami. I mean, you will learn some of these, some of these stories and you'll learn the rich history of Freak Nick, uh, from, from our standpoint. And we just hope the world, uh, enjoy it. It'll, It'll clean up a whole lot of myths out there. Uh, and, you know, like I say, some people will see their daddy and their mama on there and <laughs> and they will enjoy watching them and they can't, you know, really talk no more trash about them.